Hey guys, welcome to another Critique the Community. Today we're going to be critiquing pano photography or stitch photography, multi-images combined together to make one larger or wider image. If you would like to be a part of the next critique, we are going to do images from Iceland. This is totally different. Yeah, this was Patrick's idea, and I like this idea because what we're going to be able to do is show competing photographs taken at similar locations or the same location. So we might see Kirk Jafel done masterfully, and then Kirk Jafel done as like a snapshot or something, and we'll be able to rate and compare them. I think it'll be pretty interesting. So if you've been to Iceland, if you've taken these pictures, uh, make sure that you uh, upload those pictures. You can go to the link in the description and upload those right away. Are you ready to get to this critique? I am, and so as usual, we are starting with the highest rated image. All right, you ready to rate it? I am. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. I mean, this is awesome. It looks great. I love the lighting, especially off of this slope that's on the you know right middle of the frame. Yep. That looks so cool. The rest, the, the lighting on the rest of the shot, not that interesting. So that's what stood out to me was that this is one of those cases where usually you want everything lit well and you want detail in the shadows and everything, but I think just the topography of this is so crazy that you can get away having this nice highlight on the bank embankment and then having everything else fall in shadow. Mike Kelly's always talking about, you need highlights and you need shadows, don't open everything up. Yeah. I think this is a great example of when that works. The yeah. sky is a little little boring, but maybe maybe this works in this image as well because of the incredible lighting just on the right side of the frame. Community gives it 3.87 and of course you get a free tutorial. David will send you a private message on fstoppers.com. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, you can head over to fstoppers.com slash store, check out all the photography tutorials that we've made. And uh, we also need to give away one random winner. Choose a number two through 20. Lucky number nine. That's not a lucky number, but when we get there, it's lucky it's to me. Lucky it's lucky to somebody today. today. Yeah. That's right. So speaking of lucky, mm -hmm. what are you wearing? You look like you... Oh, this, this Yeah, this is some metal. What does this say? Fiber? I got second place in the local... The jiu-jitsu tournament? Yeah, I got I got second place. So even though this is gold, this is and really... And what, what belt are you? I'm a blue belt. So I was competing with other blue belts around the island and... Uh, in your weight class? like In my weight class. So I'm How I'm many people did best. you go up against? Uh, you know, How many it was, blue it was, belts are there, are, are there in Puerto Rico? Well, there's a ton of blue belts. Yeah. But, you know, the amount of people at the competition oh, of and course. in my weight class and stuff, like, I don't know, I can't keep track and of you, that. And you beat how many people to get to second place? Well, it was a hard match. It was a hard... <laughs> You're being oddly vague about this. Oh, well, you know, I worked really Is hard. Is this a participation trophy? Maybe. So, Maybe. wait, you got second place because what? There was like two or three people there? There was just two of us. It was a it was a big <laughs> it was a big competition, but in my weight class at my rank, there was only one other guy. So you you lost to him. I lost. And you got you got a silver. I lost and I got a silver, but everybody got the exact same medal. So even though he got first place, <laughs> he didn't get a trophy or anything? No, his medal is the same. Wow. So, so you guys in both my came mind, away. In my mind, I'm just as good as him. And uh, at the very least, I'm a silver so medalist. So maybe you should start draping your medals over this thing that we never use back here. Yeah. And over time, it will look like you're a much bigger badass than maybe you are. Well, now that I know you get participation you're going medals, to all I'm going to all the competitions. Maybe I'll go. May maybe you should I should go. get a silver. All you got to do is just <laughs> lay on the ground. All right, moving on. Remember when we went there and we were supposed to photograph this and then it was totally under scaffolding and like... It was like everything we were trying to show, shoot was completely under renovation. This one's difficult because there's some elements of this that I find to be pretty impressive. But before I say much, maybe we should, we should just rate it. Oh, I feel bad for what I'm about to do. You can go with two. It's probably wrong. I mean, here I just feel like the lighting and the sky and the warped out fisheye look, it just, to me, it looks cheesy. 
see two of those things I liked. I thought the sky was kind of nice and the lighting on the I, building are pre is pretty good. I just feel like the lighting on the building with the sky doesn't make sense. Like you're not going to have a beautiful purple and blue sky and then perfectly white light hitting this building. It just the building could sense. have a cast to it, but it could yeah. be that soft light. Yeah. The, the softness is, is pretty nice. There's no like hard highlights and this was shot in the middle of the day and it looks awful. It just feels like the white balance on everything is completely faked. Like if you look, if you look at the lights, so there's street lights all over the place that are lighting up. You can see the street light on the right, this big one in the foreground. Yep, it's lighting the... Lighting the concrete with this yellow tone. Yet the, f the building is perfectly white balanced white. It just doesn't really well, make sense. Well, I think this area is much bigger than it looks in this image because of the warped nature of it. So maybe that lamp isn't really able to even cast light no, on no, the no, building. No, 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 I agree with that. But if that's the case, then I don't think that building should be that bright at all. I feel or like the, the sky, maybe you could bring the sky down and make it darker. But if you make the sky darker, then the building needs to be way darker. Maybe. maybe. There's, there's situations where I've shot like and the sky isn't, the building could be brighter than the sky. I, I, maybe I'm wrong and this is some, you know, anomaly and, and it's being lit by just a little bit of the sun over the horizon and the, you know, the beautiful clouds are behind the building. But to me, this just seems like super photoshopped and fake. But I know tons of people who sell prints like this and yeah. do really well. I think this image can work really well for tourism. I think this would be an image that you would find on TripAdvisor and it would be something that would grab your attention and you say, we got to go there. I'm really impressed with just the lack of people. There's nobody in the frame. That's true. So I don't know this. We know this is a pano. This is some kind of stitch. So maybe this is an example where they've used multiple images to remove the people. It's the warped nature of it, you know? And maybe this location, we didn't shoot this. So maybe you have to shoot it all warped because, you know, you're probably up against, you know, yeah. the buildings. But for me, the worst part about this is just it being super wide angle. It looks kind of wonky. But other than that, I, I kind of like the colors and the... Well, community agrees with you. 3.0 star. Yeah, right on the money. Um, are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. I was in between a three and a four on this. I feel like uh, this is just kind of like a classic shot, simple, not overblown. You know, they haven't taken the saturation to a million. Uh, yeah, you know, they've they've done a little HDR on the sky, but it feels pretty reasonable. The photographer on the left, I think it makes the image a little more interesting, shows you the scale. Um, yeah, I keep going to the guy on the left and thinking, like, when I first saw this image, I was thinking, I would love, in this weird case, to have, like, 50 photographers up there. Maybe you and I. <laughs> we just like the idea of seeing what these shots really look like with all these photographers. Uh, all scrambling to take an identical photograph, so we find that humorous. But yeah, maybe the average person doesn't. <laughs> but uh, cool what do you think about the photographer's though. red hat? That, I keep going back to that too. Like that's something that pulls me out of it. Yeah, I, I, I keep seeing this little speck of red. And I assume that this was unintentional. Like I, I'm assuming that this photographer that we're looking at right now is very far away from the photographer in the frame. He's not planted there. He just happened to be there and the guy left him in there. If he's not, and this is your buddy, I would say you'd want the tripod legs to all show up and you'd want some guy who looks more stoic and like you'd want to tweak yeah. the way that he's positioned in there. But you're what, suggesting just desaturate the hat to a different color? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just like that one little red spot kind of draws my eye to it. But community likes it 3.17. This image reminds me, maybe I'm showing my age here. You can go to YouTube and look this up, but HBO used to have this trailer that they would play at the beginning of all of their shows, and it would be like, I think it starts in space or something. Some, like handmade thing, right? Yeah, and then it comes down, and it's like going through the cities and everything, and if this image had a little bit more light, it was shot a little bit more in the blue hour, like something about maybe that was filmed in on, on a set or a model that looked like wherever this is. This is like San Francisco or something. I don't know. The lower part of this image just reminds me of that commercial. Are you ready? I am. Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. This has a lot of potential. 
I just feel like it's shot at the wrong time of day or it's not a blend of maybe you would want you just want an earlier blend on top of this to bring out all the buildings right because from far away it just it looks like the times I go up in a helicopter in New York and I've timed it wrong in all the shots it's just like all highlights and there's no detail in the shadows yeah it's just a little bit late I see what you're saying I also keep leaning towards just zooming in and only capturing the squiggly street. I feel like that's so weirdly unique. Yeah. Um, and then it doesn't really fit with the rest of the shot. But I, I also can see that if you just zoom in and shot that, you're getting lots of rooftops. But maybe, maybe it could be a vertical image just of the squiggly street. I would love to see that, that street continue on into the straight path. And maybe that's not easily doable because the street lights are bright enough to ruin the car lights, but it just like stops on that one street. Maybe it's like a one way it changes, but I would love to see just something else coming in right there on the bottom. I, I see what you're saying with that as well. I don't know. It's a tough one. I'd love to see this image shot just, you know, an hour earlier or at least that frame blended on top of this. Yeah, maybe even. 20 minutes earlier, who knows. Community gives it 3.2. So we were haters on that one. All right, next up. Are you ready for this one? Um, I think so. Three, two, one. Four. Man, I'm in between a four you and really five like on this. this. Yeah, I, I love this. I love this. I just feel like this is so simple and so timeless. And so many times photographers try to find these epic locations yep. and that's cool it's great they used to impress me more until i went to them and realized everybody takes the exact same shot this just seems like a simple but very emotional shot that a lot of people would overlook like they wouldn't even consider shooting here and then just that little bit of green that we have in the bottom right the little weeds that we have in the bottom right you know you can just barely see that and then the beautiful smoke and the reflection of these trees I guess I the it. one thing that keeps me from liking this more is, and maybe this is why you like it, I just want there to be a little more pop. Like, I don't know if it's in the blacks. It just feels like you could have a little bit more black and sharpness and crisp, crispiness to it. And maybe that's the reason you like it. Uh, it's yeah, super subdued and yeah, it's like, I it's don't, not I don't that. I agree with that. I feel like I don't want to crush any blacks. I like it exactly the way it is. Could this be, I, we haven't really critiqued this yet, but could this be a little too wide? Because you know you can start doing panos where like they become so wide and you, it's like this narrow little thing, you can't print them. I always think of like the football stadiums. Have you seen those shots? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're really into football, but every stadium they have like the print and it's always this super narrow thing that's really warped. Yeah. But it, it, I always feel like, man, just cut off the edges and like make it a little bit taller or get more sky so that the image doesn't have to be printed in this really weird format. I don't know, I, I you know, this is, Peter Lick does stuff like this. He, he prints stuff huge, but ultra wide. I, where was I recently? I think in uh, Asheville, I can't remember the photographer's name, but he had a beautiful art gallery. He had a lot of stuff like this, very wide yeah. panos. So, I don't know, I like it. Well, community agrees with you more, 3.3. .3. They liked a little bit more than me. Yeah, but 3.3 .3 still, still rounds to down, three. <laughs> but there's a lot of fours in that rating. Yeah. Now, this looks familiar. Is this on top of the hotel that we went to? Yeah, is it Shangri-La? Something like that. <laughs> We've been to so many places, and it's unbelievable how we don't remember the names or the locations of anything. Now, this photo... I know because I've picked these pictures, but this is our friend Frazier from Vegas. Oh, really? Yeah, so he went out to Dubai and uh, went to many of the locations that we've done in Photograph in the World, and you know, he's gonna look up all the best spots, so I think he probably went to 20 of the best locations and, and took images, but. And by the way, if you wanna know all the photographers in the tutorial or this critique, and the uh, links to their portfolios. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, click on the link in the description. It'll take you back to the entire critique post. You can see all the submissions, but you can see the ones that we you know, put in this critique and you can click on each of the portfolios. 
You can also follow photographers on f-stoppers if you didn't know that. So when they upload new pictures, you'll get a little notification on your f-stoppers homepage, kind of similar to uh, Facebook. All right, are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, one. You're going five? I'm in between a four and a five. I'm going five. I feel like this looks awesome. I, I think this looks better than the one that Alaya got. Ooh. Fighting words. I don't think he watches these, so, yeah, I'm so sure. Fraser will be ecstatic. Yeah, I, I feel like this is better. Um, Let me. Know, the sky is awesome. The sky is awesome. Before you get into it, like part of me just rates these lower when it's the same shot. Like I think I saw ten that's of these true. shots, yeah, and this image true. was actually the reason that I thought the whole critique of Iceland would be interesting mm. because I thought, how many of these images can I put into this critique that are from the exact same spot? Yeah. So I always knock it down a little when it's like the same location. For Dubai, this I sky agree. is unbelievable. I'm actually curious, Fraser, if this is the sky you got. Yeah. Because you don't get skies like this in Dubai very and often. And there's there appears to be a little haze along the uh, where? Along the uh, horizon line. On the far right? Yeah, and the middle. I mean look right behind the burge. It's like there's yeah. this little But see that haze is what you normally see, so I don't know if Here's the reason I gave it a three. And maybe you're going to be like, uh, that's the dumb reason. Every time you photograph Dubai, it changes. There's new buildings being built and everything. And my eye instantly goes to these buildings that are being built, these two towers. And you have all the scaffolding. And it just looks like an incomplete like uh, rendering or it looks like I didn't like even notice bulky. that. My so, eye went straight there. And there's, there's yeah. absolutely nothing you can do. But yeah. if you look at this image over time, yeah. which would actually be a really interesting thing, if somebody took all the pictures from the last 10 years that photographers have made yeah. and made some time lapse where they were all aligned, yeah, that'd be maybe cool. I just gave somebody a really good idea. Yeah. And you could see all the towers going up and everything. Because this shot is like one of the three everyone goes, you know, they all go to this building. That's a good point, yeah. When we were there, I think these towers were just, they were breaking ground or something, you know. But my mm. eye goes there and it's like right in the center of the frame. And I'm like, oh, what a downer that like the time you were there, that wasn't completed. Or it wasn't so low that it wasn't a big deal, but. All right, good point, four stars. Sorry, Fraser. Community, 3.38. I do have to say though, the lighting and everything, the detail, like I love all the highlights on the left side. Yeah, it looks good. It, it does, does look, look good. good. Oh, wow. This one showed up right afterwards. Maybe you don't know where this is. You should is, know where this is. Is this also Dubai? Yes, we've stood at this exact okay. location. Is the horizon straight on this? Am I crazy? Maybe it looks a little straight on the right, but then it like warps down a little. And maybe that's something, you know, you, you deal with a lot with the panos is if you don't get it perfect. What are you talking about? You fix it in post. It, like it looks like it looks like it's going down on the left. Yeah, it's kind of got a curvature. It looks like it's going like this. Uh, maybe it's Wildly because the off. buildings on the left are taller or something. I don't know. It just feels like it's not straight. Now I want to throw it in Photoshop and uh, look. All right, are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. I feel bad giving this a two. You should feel bad. It's just something about the color palette and like all the buildings look so gray and. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're right. It's like, a li it's, it's definitely overdone post-processing, but at the same time, it's like a unique a unique edit. It doesn't feel super cheesy to me, but maybe maybe it is cheesy. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's something about it. It's just so, it's like, I feel like those buildings should, I mean, look at the shadows. The shadows in the water are really dark. I feel like the buildings should be darker. Maybe not darker than the water, but something like HDR-ish. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely got a little HDR stuff. I mean, there's detail in the sun. Yeah, there's detail in the buildings. That doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I mean, some funny business is going on here, but I think it's done well, and I, I could see this being used for certain types of commercial applications. Community, they like it significantly better than both of us. 3.39, this is one of the higher rated images in the critique. Yeah. This photographer will be really excited to have the, uh, the God Ray King critiquing his own work. Oh, that's true. I will make that... <laughs> Stick. If I say it enough times, I used God rays one time. You will be the God one time, 
and I'll never live it down. Three, two, one. I want to give this a four. I love the lighting. I just keep thinking like, would this be an image I'd keep coming back to? The subject matter is just so simple. But the lighting is really, really nice. And the fog. This goes back to the shot that I liked so much of the... The subdued one? Yeah, right. like, I love this. I, I want to give this five stars, too. I just feel like unique location. Every photographer would just completely overlook this. They'd move on to the same shot of Kirchfeld. But this, with the lighting and the, the fog and the god rays, I think this is awesome. Do you want the trees in the top right to not be cropped off? I was thinking about that. I was thinking about I that. I don't know if the camera could be tilted up just a little or the crop, if this was cropped, just be extended a little bit. I like the weight of the bottom, but there's something about, you know, and I see the leading lines, like there's a lot that's working well with this composition. My eye just keeps going to the top of that tree and uh, I don't yeah. know if it felt like the horizon allowed this to be a little more expansive and like put you in the location just the littlest bit more. Or what do you think about cropping the top off more? Is that what you did? I No, I, I can't easily do it on the iPad. But if you cropped yeah. the top more, I don't know if you could crop completely past those trees. You can't, no, you need those trees you up there. You need them up there? I think so. Hmm. Well, community, 3.54. So is this the second highest rated this might image? might have been the second highest. This is a really cool image. Do you want to change your vote to a I'm not going to change my vote, but... You're just going to admit you're wrong. Number nine. Lucky number nine. Lucky number nine. You have won a free tutorial on fstoppers.com slash store. We have been here before as yes. well. Do you remember what this is called? If I really thought... It's like right there. It's like Vander Sluice or Vanderhorn. Vanderhorn? I, I, Something with a V? I like Vandersloots. Vandersloots? Let's call it Vandersloots. Uh, we shot this in Photographing the World 1. Which is this? I remember Eli was taking this picture or something similar, and then I was taking video or pictures of him, and he was standing in the water. It actually became, I believe, the cover, Photographing the World. Oh, you're right. Photographing yeah. the World 1. He's, like, yeah, standing yeah. there, and it's, it's not quite this angle, but it's very similar. And what's wild about this, and I may be way off with the the location, but this almost makes it look like an island, but I believe, because you flew the drone over the road that I think gets you to this standing point, mm -hmm. I believe there's a road just to the left, Yeah. but the way that you can frame this up is pretty cool that like it looks like a perfect island. Yeah, it's really, really wild. It, I mean, if you kind of squint your eyes, it doesn't even look like a photograph. It kind of looks like some computer 3D render it's like a beetle without its legs. <laughs> Something. Um, are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four. Are you going four? I'm going four just because I really do like the tones and the color. What about you not rating images highly because everybody takes pictures that, of the same um, thing? Yes. Like I kind of want to <laughs> put that in there. I guess. The shot that I see of this more often, and maybe I'm going to be wrong here, is the one just a little further back with all the dunes. Remember, we walked through all those dunes. Like, you have the dunes, and then you have this. I feel like that photograph I see ten times more than this. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a super trendy thing to do now. The part of me that maybe pushes this towards a three in terms of just subject matter is it starts to look kind of like those small world photos where you make, like, the yeah. pano, and it becomes a little circle. This starts to feel computer generated or it feels a little gimmicky, even though it's not. I just really like the tones of it. I agree. I mean, it's it's incredibly well done. I'm trying to remember, what was Elias shot here? Did he do a black and white image? I can't even remember. I think so. Maybe we forced him to make it black and white to do something different. So I might like this better than Elias shot as well. I don't remember. But uh, Community... Ooh, 3.56. So this is a second is, might be the second highest rated one. Wow, the first and second highest rated images both won tutorials. Unless there's one that's higher than this. We shall see. What is going on with this image? If you zoom in, like behind the church, do you see the cross hatching going on? 
Mm, yeah. What is that? Did they like take this picture off their monitor or? <laughs> Are you ready? I am. Three, two, one. Four. Really, just three stars. This is another spot where I've seen lots of people go here and take this photograph, but this is beautiful. The lighting is incredible. I'm trying to determine if the fog is real or this is a blend of images taken over the course of hours potentially. Um, the fact that there is fog below the tips of each of these mountains seems too perfect. But I think that's what happens in this location. Where is this? Is this like France or Austria or... I don't even know. Somewhere in that general area. But, uh, I mean, my, it's my issue beautiful. with this, I think this has a lot of potential. I think this is a great photo. I think the bones are there. Like, you could do something with this. It just, when I look at it, I just see these really bright red highlights and then these super, like, blue shadows. And then the sky has this almost HDR y red. Like, when I just look at it as a whole, it just, there's, there's enough post processing, I think, with the saturation that makes me start to say, like, what is going on here? And if you took this again and just pulled stuff down a little bit, made it more subdued like you like it, I think that this could, this could easily be a four. I just look at it and think, like, man, it's like purple mountain majesty on the bottom and then, like, fiery hell on top. It's hmm. maybe there's a chance this is how it looked, but it just <laughs> it doesn't read that so. way to me. It's, it's like too much color. That's funny. I never even noticed the purple and the blues down there. Mediocre, yeah, maybe it is a little mediocre bit too photographers much. rarely do notice mm. all of that right mm. away. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a little overdone, but it's beautiful. You're but again, there at the right time. Like you have like the raw files. I think are great. Like you have what you need. I just feel like something in the post production has just made this over the top a little too much for my tastes. What do you think the community is going to say? Well, I keep saying, wow, this must be the second highest rate of shot. And they keep going up and up and up. This one's even higher, 3.63. So people like this? So maybe this is the second highest rate of shot. And what's interesting is with our community, especially these critiques, everyone like rates other images lower to like try to win the tutorial. So in the real world, on our real community that's not based on the critique, yeah. this image probably would rate even higher. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen this. And it's like a four star. Yeah, and it's rated higher on our community. So well done, I think it's awesome. What's funny about this location is they are standing right off the parking lot. Like when you talk about places that are designed to where all the photographers go and take the picture, sometimes that requires like a little hike. Yeah. This one literally they could be like in the parking spot. You know, it's, it's like right there. They could just be looking at their camera. They could be in their car with like the heat or the AC on. Yeah. And the, the camera's just taking a time and lapse. And just to know. the right, uh -huh. just out of frame, is like the restaurant, hotel, yeah. where you can get soup and stuff. Yeah, so what's interesting about this is, you know, we, we hiked down a little bit and... We did, the, we did a pretty cliche shot, too, with we the did. road. Yeah, but I might like this composition better. What, what do you think? There is something about the foreground, like, I know this location, so it's pulling me out of it a little bit. But if I didn't know this location... The tumbleweed, like the weeds right there in the front, and then having that nice buff like on the right hand side, it, it makes this feel a little more epic. Whereas if you zoom in and do what everybody does and you just focus in on the three towers, it doesn't really give you a sense of where you are. So I do like this composition. Have we rated this yet? No, we haven't. Let's do it. All right. Three, two, one. Three, four. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I feel like this is really incredible graphic art, but w you know, if you ever take star photos, you know you can't <laughs> blend in the sun like that. Yeah, it's like the sun and the sun is lighting the rock, and we're getting crazy stars. It just doesn't really make sense from a realistic standpoint, but from just an art standpoint, I feel like it's beautiful and it's super cool and interesting. So that's why I lean towards the four. Now, when you look at this, we're talking about lighting for a second. I assume that is the sun. 
It could be the moon, but... Or, I don't think there's a town back there, but is that position of the sun lighting the the rocks? And the, it, it's close enough, but it almost feels like the sun should be to the far left of the frame. And if this was being blended, if all of, you know, time warping and all that, like, who knows when this was taken, but does it feel like that's realistic? You see what I'm saying? I do like, see what you're saying. It's like the... The brightest part of the image is straight in the back, but it feels like mm. the light's coming from further off camera to the left. Yeah, but if you look at the far bottom right, it kind of feels like shadows are being cast from that direction, doesn't it? I don't know. I mean, we're, we're overthinking it. I mean, I feel like the average person is going to see this and be blown away. They're going, yeah. oh, that is an amazing photograph. So that's, that's why I went for but. It's not realistic, but, uh, you know, it's probably not the point. Community, 3.39. How would they have taken this? What do you mean? In terms of a stitch, like it's... Uh, it's in low light, so it's not an iPhone. But you're saying, like, everyone's so, s like, steady? Like, with people, you'd be worried more about movement? Yeah, it just seems like if you're going to do a stitch, then you would... This, this would be planned, and you'd be telling everybody to remain very still, and maybe he, the photographer didn't have a wide enough lens or something. There's something going on, though, with the depth of field that I find very interesting. It's like we're getting that Bryn Heiser effect going on, where we're getting uh, this wide, Shot. shallower depth of field with a wide-angle look. Yeah. Um, so for that reason, I feel like this is much more interesting than it would normally be. Three, two, one... Three. I'm in between a three and a four. I mean, I feel like it's very interesting. Lighting's great. It's yeah, it's like great for like an editorial shot. I just keep thinking like, would this be? I guess it depends what you're going for in your portfolio. But would this be like up front in your portfolio? And then how does it fit in your portfolio? Yeah. And then what about the crop's a little weird in that we're we're cutting the guy off on the left, but then the guy on the right has a lot of dead space off to the right. It kind of feels just like tighten it a little bit. Yeah, you could crop in a little bit. I do bit like that. And crop like into the, the guy on the right. The right side of the frame isn't really needed. But uh, like when I first saw this, I thought, man, like it's too bad they're not doing anything. But now that I've really had time to look at it, it's like I don't know if you've been in a recording studio, but when you sit there and you you've recorded stuff and you're you're listening back to either see if your take is good or maybe this is the final the final mix down and you're just like really fine tuned. It gives you that vibe, you know, like they've been working hard and now it's time to like listen back. But if you don't know all of that, it kind of feels like they're a little boring, you know? Yeah. Community 2.32. Hmm. That's interesting. I like this more than that. Huh. All right, I think I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. Three, four. Really? Four stars, huh? There's something very unique about this. It's, In which it's way? It's like so smooth and bright feeling, and maybe it's that they've just darkened the sky so much, but it, you know, it feels like it's shaving cream or something. <laughs> it, it doesn't feel like normal snow to me, and I think something's going on in post-processing more than just you know, darkening the sky to make it look like that. Yeah, I don't know if this is like infrared or just, again, when you go into Photoshop and you choose the black and white filters, depending on how you move them, like I used to do it with the, the red, the green, and the blue, but now you can use like seven or eight different colors. Many times, like if the sky is super blue, maybe you could just pull the blues down and the sky will go black like this. But I think this is kind of timeless and classy, and I love that this isn't a location that I know. And I love that even though this is a pano stitch, it's not so wide that everything becomes diminished. Mm -hmm. I wish maybe there was a little bit more in the foreground. Like maybe I'd want these two little valleys to merge and you'd see that. But I think it's interesting enough. Like the clouds are really cool. The contrast is really nice. And when you're in the mountains up high and high altitudes, you get this cool effect where the sun comes through and it casts really sharp highlights here, but then hard shadows. I think that's really what's working for this image. Gives you that shaving cream effect. I love that shaving cream effect. Community 3.1. So Patrick, you got the new iPhone 11 
Pro. Right here with me always. Guys, you don't know what it's like living with Patrick, who, even though he's in the body of a 37-year-old. Here we go. Patrick's mind is that of a 75-year-old, and so he gets infuriated with any change in his life. Anything that's a little bit different is infuriating to him, and so he's had to learn to use the iPhone without the button. He's had to learn a couple of gestures to do things. And instead of saying like, wow, I'm so fortunate to be able to afford a $1,500 phone, and look how nice and new and better it is, I'm excited to learn these new features. He's just like, why would they make it like that? Why would they get rid of the button? Oh my gosh, who, how can anyone know these gestures? And I'm like, it's three gestures. I'm telling you right now, and there's a million YouTube videos about it, just watch the video and learn about it, but you refuse. You just prefer to complain. Yeah, I'm not the type that's gonna sit and watch a YouTube video for 20, 10 minutes on like all the new gestures and learn it. Like, I just feel like it should be intuitive. And I feel like that's what Apple's whole motto is. It's like sometimes dumbed down too much for the average consumer. But when it's dumbed down so much that I'm like, oh, to get to the Wi-Fi, I now have to swipe the top right corner instead of up and up does something different. It's, it's just, I think this is the reason that I'm scared to go to Android is because if Apple makes me this mad, changing a few things in a relatively small fashion. Yeah. Imagine changing your phone every year or two with Android where like, and not just, Android's the operating system. Yeah. So you could be changing different manufacturers. Yeah. It could be entirely different. I, I don't think my mind could handle that. I agree with you I 100%. I don't think it could handle that. Your mind cannot handle it. One thing, and we'll stop this rant right here, is this power button, why didn't they put it back on top like it used to be? I am constantly taking screen captures I of my too. phone. I agree, because I Because when I pick up my hand, I pick up the phone, where does my hand rest? Right where this happens. And I'm like, why would they do that? But <laughs> my phone is now full of screen captures. <laughs> and I'm like, this is ridiculous. It used to be so much. I can agree with you on that. I can agree with you on that. Well, but let's I think, end on that. I think you should work on learning new things a little better. This includes cameras, computers, everything like you don't like anything new anymore no all right let's sometimes they just they make it perfect and they should just end there <laughs> they change it just for the sake no of change. new features ever they just change for the sake of change you know, that drives <laughs> me crazy i think god just blesses these parts of the world more <laughs> he's like oh yeah you're up in is this the dolomites or something as well let's just call it the dolomites it's all the dolomites all right let's rate it all right three two one four we agree, four I, stars. I do like this image. I mean, this is crazy looking. This is crazy looking. But the thing is, you know, like you said, is it's crazy looking to us. We're like, wow, it's amazing. And that's what the average person thinks when they see these images. But then when you go here and you see 25 photographers standing in the same spot waiting for this exact same cloud movement to happen, it loses some of the magic. But because I've never seen this before, Maybe it takes away from the f photography a little bit, but this location is still spectacular. Oh, and this of course. image is still great. Well, that's the reason photographers go to the same spots, is like it's the most beautiful places in the world. Community, 3.37. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, interesting. They did it like a day to night uh, pano, pano. But yeah. looking at it again, is that what's going on? Or is it just, they're just shooting in two different directions and one's brighter than the other? It's kind of hard to tell with Times Square because it's so nuclear that... I didn't even think this was Times Square. Yeah. I thought this was Japan or something. Is this Times Square? No, it's definitely Times Square. I mean, that okay. statue there. Oh, I can see because the Japanese... Like, uh -huh. I didn't even notice the, the Japanese it's, symbol. It's like, it's like subconscious. All right, I think I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. One, three. You huh, went three? two stars? I just can imagine a photographer doing this and he set out to make this image and it would be spectacular. This to me just feels a little sloppy. It's hard to read. It's super wide. And I know that that's what this is, pano, but like maybe you could have stitched above too. And it's just, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the shadows on the far left and like the exposure on the... It almost looks like this is super low res, or it's like, 
The dynamic range, even though this is a day to night stitch, which is like the craziest dynamic range, something like Do seems you think off. this is a day to night stitch? Like, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I mean, it just feels like if you look at the left side of Times Square, like this is one road. So, like, it, the way this is shot, it makes it feel like the road is spinning and it's rotating. And so, therefore, the middle part of the frame is in shade, but the left part of the frame is in daylight but i don't think that's what's happening i think if there's daylight here on the left that that whole road should be in daylight you're probably right and in daylight yes Times square is extremely bright but like it's still not going to look like nighttime how do you feel about the cars kind of being warped into each other like on the left you see the truck turning into the bus and stuff do you feel like it would be better if this was a longer exposure with each of the shots or do you mm -hmm. like it showing a little more detail? I mean, you can you can pick out the people and stuff, which is somewhat interesting, but you could also say, ah, I feel like they should be, you know, motion blurred out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of would like to see it both ways. Part of me feels like what they chose to do here is the one option I wouldn't have done. I would have wanted the cars blurred more to where you don't see the transitions. Or I would want the shutter and the stitching to be so fast and perfect that every car is there for the transition, you know? Right. But having it to where it's like, I would guess this is a shutter of like 30th of a second or half a second. It's just long enough to where you have a little bit of blur, but it's very jarring. Community 2.31. They agree with you. This is very different. This is very different. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. There's part of me that wants to push this to a two because the post-production is so crude and it's just so contrasty. But then other times I'm thinking maybe that's what's making this so awesome. Is uh, yeah. It's like, it, it almost looks like the highlights are so blown out that it feels like a snapshot. But I could also see this being fine art. I also keep thinking, should you Photoshop the 50 out and you just have the lines and the chairs and it would take you away from the football, you know, theme? I feel like my critique is I want there to be a chair in the upper left. I feel like that little dead spot in the upper left yep. is freaking me out. And then the chair in the bottom right is freaking me out too. And I just like, it's almost so perfect. but. Super interesting. Again, I feel like another shot that the average photographer would walk right past, but this is really interesting. Community pretty much agrees with us, 2.88. Now here is some funny business. Funny business. With the sky and the lighting on the rock. Are you ready? I am ready, I think. Yep. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. What is your opinion of the composition? That's my biggest critique. Without the the name in the middle, bottom. Does it just feel like there's too much water? Yes. Yes. And then if there was a rock down there, then it would be super cool. But because there's no rock down there, it just kind of feels like tons of dead space. And it leads my eye to the watermark, which is cool if that's what you want. But if this were printed without the watermark, it feels way too top heavy to me. Yeah, I just want the camera to be tilted up like five degrees. Now, maybe something bad is happening up there. Like there's a house or there's, I don't know what it would be. It seems like there'd be really interesting stuff up there. I just feel like I want to see more of the rock face and have the bottom parts of the rock face being the leading lines, lines pulling you into the surf. But instead, you're left with just, it's still an interesting foreground, but I don't feel like you need as much of it as they have here. Community likes it a little more than us, 3.19. I mean, there's something definitely magical about this shot, but it's it's like when you really start digging into it, there's a few strange I also, and I don't know if this is just the JPEG choices. upload, but there's also these like magenta and cyan banding right below the surf that my eye keeps going to. And I don't mm. know if that's just like part of the uploading to the internet, but if that's in the final file, I would just desaturate that and make sure that there's no color down there. Next up. Do you feel like images feel more like fine art when people add the white border around it? <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think it, it fools me and I'm like, ooh, this is fancy. 
Don't do it on f-stoppers though. It's it's a pain in the butt for the way the website works. Just just put the images themselves. But yeah, it feels like it's framed. You know, three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. I feel like this is one of these images where, you know, it's not that impressive, but you go into an art gallery and they have this printed the size of a wall and in some incredible frame, and you are blown away. Like, look at the weather. Look at that rainstorm coming mm -hmm. in. Um, but right now when it's small and you can't see that much detail, it just kind of feels like, all right, you know. It also doesn't have that much interest in the foreground. But, but again, if it's printed large and it's got great lighting on it, then you might be able to zoom in with your eyes, you know, by walking up and just, oh, look at all the detail down there. It's beautiful. But we can't see it on our small little iPads right now. Yeah, there's a lot of detail. I guess I'm just thinking, and, and you can't always control this, and maybe I'm asking for too much, but if there was a house or if there was an old car driving out of the way or there were something, I just... I just feel like this la this location isn't so epic, and I know we've talked about subdued locations being kind of nice, but I just feel like, I don't know, it just leaves me wanting a little bit more. Like, I want a human interaction of some sort that the storm is hitting, or even a nature thing, like there's deer or something, but obviously you can't control that. Otherwise, you're just left with like, wow, you got a really cool weather pattern. Community gives it 3.42, so they like it more than us. Are you ready to rate this? I guess. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree again. I I could push this towards a four, though. Like, I keep going to the composition because the composition seems really, really cool. And it keeps, but it keeps pulling my eye down to the left. But then I wind up exploring the whole image anyway. Which yeah. maybe is a good sign of a good composition, like it mm -hmm. takes your interest somewhere, but then it leaves a lot for you to still explore and look at. I, I keep going back and forth between thinking I love this composition to like, ah, it's just taking a picture of a man-made staircase like this kind of ruins how beautiful this cliff is with all these little islands out there. I can see that. And maybe too. I want to zoom past all this man-made stuff, and I just want to see how incredible all these little islands are because the water looks great. But then I think, no, it's cool having the figure eight. I shape. wonder what it would look like if you if you took a few steps forward and shot where that gate is, and you could like look past that part of the walkway. I agree. You'd still get the little bit of wall that's on the left, but then maybe you could get the foreground or. I don't know. It's hard to say, but this is a really cool location. I don't think I've ever seen this place. I certainly do not recognize this. Community, a little harsher than us, 2.85. Hmm. And the final image. <laughs> this in the world? appears to be like a Disney World or something. I'm becoming a bit of a Disney World fanatic. Yeah, how can, fanatic, how but can I you not know? <laughs> I don't know. You're obsessed with Disneyland <laughs> and Disney World. I haven't been to all of them, so I don't know all the different castle shapes. But but the I ones you've been to, have you been to every season? You've been to the spooky <laughs> one and the Christmas one and the Easter yeah, one? Yeah, I have, I have. <laughs> so this looks like either this is always lit this way or could this be Christmas? Uh, no, I mean, if this is Disney World, they would, they would only do this at Christmas time. Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. I do not feel like this is a good composition um this just feels like you're kind of shooting the side of this castle and then you're capturing weird things like the planter light in the bottom left and you're the edge of the bridge on the right it doesn't even feel like the horizon straight to me it just kind of feels like this is the colors and everything make me think that this is not an iphone pano yeah but the composition and everything makes me feel like it is yeah i i in terms of portfolio, I just always wonder if, if this is Disney World, or this isn't Disney World, I don't think, but if this is Disney it's not Land, Disney World. if it's Disneyland, would that ever belong in your portfolio? And it's not to say you can't still take a beautiful picture of it, but 
That I don't know that I would find a use for that image, but no, no, I I, I agree. But you know, if you sold so stock or something, although I've looked into stock because I thought, man, it's hard to find good theme park stock photos and videos. Does Disney have some kind of? They own some kind of copyright on all the. Yeah, so they allow photography for personal use and stuff, but the second you try to start selling hmm. it, they go, ah, this is private property, you're not allowed to Oh, because you're on their property, too. Yeah. yeah, so I had thought, like, man, I'm going to get some models and go into Disney and, like, shoot pro theme park stock. Yeah. But I don't think you can get away with that. Huh. All right, guys, the community on this one, 2.23, and that wraps up this critique. So once again, if you'd like to be a part of the next critique, it's going to be photos from Iceland. And we're purposefully going to choose multiple images from the same locations. similar locations. Yeah, that should be a really interesting critique. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.